Jesus. Let's just offer him, Lord. Have us to do this for your will. Oh, yes, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> Oh, 
take hold of the service and close it out as you see fit. Well, you can't get rid of a bad dollar. So I'm back. <laughs> Pam said she wasn't going to introduce me, but I've been in the supply ministry for a long time. And uh, one time I was invited to a church, and I got there, and uh, the fellow says, uh, you're going to have to introduce the speaker. He said, I don't know who he is. And the guy that got me to come got up there and said, I don't know who he is either. And so they turned over to me, and I said, well, I know who I am. I know why I'm here, and you're going to know why I'm here before I leave. And that night I walked in, they said, well, we was going to uh, vote on a pastor tonight, but said that we're going to vote to call you. So sometimes things have a way of working out. I hear some good things from your church. Uh, after Brother Jack has been here a while, I hear some good things, and that's great. Because when I hip a church, when they're looking for a pastor, I feel like I may have had a hand in helping them in along a rough spot. And so I appreciate that, and I appreciate the good word I hear. I hear people are getting saved, being baptized. I hear, I hear some good things, and, and that's great. And so uh, by now, he's been here long enough, but now you've had time to uh, invite him over for a hot dog or a hamburger or take him out to, to lunch somewhere. You can take a book to mom's on Monday. Uh, I heard a guy did. They had the preacher over one day for dinner. And uh, they left the little boy in, in the living room to entertain the preacher while the mom finished up uh, in the kitchen. And uh, the little boy asked the preacher, says, preacher says, you know what we're having for dinner? He said, well, no, son, I'm not going to have any eyes. He said, we're having goat. And his mama heard him out of the kitchen and said, goat? Boy, what do you mean we're having goat? He said, where would you get that idea? He said, from you, Mom. said, as we was going to church this morning, you and Dad were talking about having a preacher over for dinner sometime. You said, today's as good as any day to have the old goat for dinner. <laughs> <laughs> so, so don't do it like that. But have the old goat over sometime. It'll make him feel good. And it might even make you feel good. John chapter 8, uh, verse number 31, where you find these words. You see my tie, and I won't be preaching about free indeed. We appreciate all you men that, and women or, that served in our service. We thank you so much for the freedom that we enjoy. And because of the sacrifices a lot of times that the military personnel uh, did that we are here today and so we appreciate that so much but we've got to realize that no matter if you live in the freest nation in the world which we do but you won't never know real freedom until you know the freedom that comes from God free indeed is the title of the message today John chapter 8 begin reading with verse number 31 we find these words then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. They answered him, We be Abraham's seed. We're never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou? You shall be free indeed. Jesus answered them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whosoever committeth sin is a servant of sin. And the servant abideth not in the house forever, but the son abideth ever. Verse 36 says, If the son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. Sometimes we take our freedom or for advantage, for granted. But it's costly. And our freedom is not free. And so today Jesus said, If you trust the Son, which is He of Jesus, ye shall be free indeed. And the word indeed means without question. You shall be free indeed, without question. And so today we want to think about that for a minute, or a few moments together, as we think about Jesus 
can make us free. First of all, I want you to know that Jesus can set you free from the penalty of sin. When he was on the cross, sinners were on his mind. Pam and me and you and everybody. When he was on the cross, I was on his mind. And so today, you can be free from the penalty of sin by trusting Jesus Christ. Romans chapter 6, uh, verse number 22, uh, tells it like it is. You should be free from the penalty of sin because that was the penalty. Adam and Eve were completely free in the garden and they could do anything in that garden except eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And God said, the day you eat of that tree, you're going to surely die. And they died spiritually that day when they ate of that fruit. They died physically that day because the day is with the Lord is a thousand years and a thousand years is a day. They died physically that day because nobody has ever lived to be a thousand year old. Methuselah lived to be 969. But so they died that day. But we can be free from the penalty of sin because someone died in my place. Look what it says in Romans chapter 6 verse 23. Here it talks about the penalty of sin. Now being made free from sin and become servants of God, you have your fruit and the holiness and the end, everlasting life. Sounds pretty good deal to me. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And so the penalty of sin is upon us. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Now there's some folks that think they're pretty good and some folks are. Uh, pretty pretty good, uh, pretty nice folks to be around. But all of us have uh, shortcomings. We've all uh, done things that we uh, shouldn't have done. We've all said things that we shouldn't have said. One time a, a preacher was invited to do a revival. And in that revival he got up and uh, he, when it came his time, he got up and he said, uh, how many in here has ever told a lie? And you're about everybody. Held up their hand because you're about everybody of some point in time, have told a lie. And then he said, well, okay, so how many then in here has ever taken anything that didn't belong to you? How many here has ever stole something? And you're about everybody had to hold up their hand because we've all taken stuff that, that uh, it was a little bit on the shady side, so everybody held up their hand when they told a lie, uh, stole something, and he looked around at the preacher. He said, preacher, there ain't no way in the world we can have revival here. It said, all you got is a bunch of liars and thieves. <laughs> and that's what we all are. We're all liars and thieves. We've all sinned and come short of God's glory. But thanks be when he was on the cross, the penalty of sin was erased because someone died in my place. And so therefore, today I am free from the penalty of death because Jesus died in my place. If I was to get a a speeding ticket out here and, and I, I didn't have the money to pay it and, and you can't pay the price for sin but uh, Jerry got a bunch of money and he's come up and said I tell you what said, brother Don I'll just pay that ticket for you well you see I'll be free I'll be free if somebody will pay it for me that's exactly what Jesus did he paid for my sins and so therefore I'm free from the penalty of sin. I didn't have to pay it because Jerry went down and paid it for me I had to pay the sin debt because Jesus paid it for me. When he was on the cross, Pam, you did a good job on that song, and uh, that was a perfect song for the freedom that we enjoy today. When he was on the cross, I became free from the penalty of sin. I don't have to worry about that anymore. And that, my friend, is called <clears throat> justification. When you're saved, it's called justification. And justification means just as if I, justified means just as if I'd never done it. That's what he did. I became free from the penalty of sin because Jesus paid the price that I couldn't pay. So we get, we're alive forevermore, and we're free because it's a gift of God when Jesus died in my place. So we became free from the penalty of sin because Jesus died in my place, and I trusted him as my soul salvation. Therefore, when I did that night, that time when I said, Lord, I want you to be my Savior, I became free from the penalty of sin. Don't have to worry about that anymore. So I'm free from the penalty of sin. Then I'm not only free from the penalty of sin, 
I'm free from the power of sin. In Romans chapter 6, she was in Romans chapter 6 verse uh, 22, so going up there to Romans chapter 6 verse 12. I became free from the power of sin. You see, uh, the devil's got you. Lost people won't admit it, but they got a father. Now, I'm saved, and I've got a heavenly father. Lost folks don't know it, but they've got a father because Jesus said, you are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father you will do. Man, I tell you what, if people that are lost, they really are out of control because the devil has got them in their grasp, and the devil has got control of them. He says in Romans chapter 6, verse number 12, Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal bodies, that you should obey it in the lust thereof. Neither yield your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. For sin shall not have dominion over you. See, I'm free. Because, like I say, sin shall not have dominion over you. For you are not under the law, and all the law is given, and so I know I was a sinner, but under grace. What then? Shall we sin because we're not under the law, but under grace? God forbid. Know you not that to whom you yield yourself servants to obey? His servants ye are to whom you obey, for their sin and the death are of obedience unto righteousness. But God be thanked that ye were the servants of sin, but you have obeyed from the heart that form of from the penalty of sin because I knew I was lost, I knew I was going to hell, I trusted Jesus as my Savior. I became free from the penalty of sin. I don't have to worry about that penalty anymore because he paid for it on Calvary's cross. That precious blood that he shed on Calvary's cross was a payment for my sin. Therefore, I became free from the penalty of sin and now I became free from the power of sin as I let the Holy Spirit lead me. You see, when a person gets saved, the Holy Spirit comes to live with inside. Jesus comes to live with inside. And I love to uh, tell people how to get saved. And then I love to uh, ask them uh, when, when we get through praying the sinner's prayer, I love to turn around and say, where is Jesus right now? And if they really meant me, they say, say, he's in my heart. The Holy Spirit comes within to live. Now, now when I was lost, I was free to do whatever I wanted to do. I mean, I, I could follow the lust of the devil. I could, I could do some things, and I did some things. And that's the reason I, I fell in that category of thieves and liars. I, I, I did things that he wanted me to do. But now that I'm saved, I have the Holy Spirit. Now I have someone to help me. And the Holy Spirit, when you, after you get saved, the Holy Spirit will help you. He will help you read the Bible and study the Bible, and he'll help you know what God expects out of you. And that's the reason a lot of people don't like to read the Bible. Some people say, I don't know why that people don't like it. I do, because they don't want to know what God thinks about it. Friend, God tells you in his book what he thinks. He, every once in a while, the people say, I think God's trying to tell us something. I said, no. God's not trying to tell us something. God is telling us something. And his holy word God will tell you something. And so therefore, when I learn what his uh, word, from his word, I learn what I can expect out of God now that I'm saved, I'm his. I can learn what I can expect out of God, but I also can learn what God expects out of me. And so when I learn that, and when I learn to follow the Spirit, the Spirit is going to lead me. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yeah. Because he don't want a Christian, a, he don't want a Fairview church member, he don't want someone to bring shame on the name of Jesus. And so therefore, he leads us in the price of righteousness for his name's sake. And so therefore, I became free from the power of sin because I don't have, it doesn't have dominion over me anymore. Now I have someone inside to help me, and I know what's right, I know what's wrong, and therefore, I have the authority to say no. That might, that might be one of the N-words. 
No needs to be said a whole lot of times. I have the authority to say no uh, because I have the Holy Spirit inside and I know what God says of that. And as long as God says it's wrong, it's going to be wrong. No matter who says it's right, it's still going to be wrong. If God says it's wrong, I say amen there. Well, I say it anyway. Anyway, uh, if I'm free from the power of sin, it doesn't have any more power over me because now if I sin, if I tell a lie, it's because I wanted to or might need to in some cases. If, if I do, if I steal something, it's because I don't have to do it. I don't have to follow the lust of the devil. I don't have to go along. I, so therefore, he has made a way of escape. No, no sin. If, if, you, if you find yourself in a, in a situation that you shouldn't be in, don't go trying to blame the devil. You see, some people say, the Flip Wilson, you say the devil made me do it. Well, if he's lost, that, that may be the truth. But if you're saved, the devil can't make you do anything because greater is he that's within than he that's in the world. And so therefore, all I've got to do is just listen to the, to, the, to the righteous voice in place of the unrighteous uh, voice. And so that, therefore, uh, today, I'm free from the power of sin. And if I do anything, it's because I wanted to. So next time you've done something that you should have done, if you want to blame somebody, then you find your great big full length mirror and stand right in front of it and look right square in that mirror and say, you're the rascal that made me do that. And so just figure out who did because you don't have to. Here's what the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse number 13. He says he'll make a way of escape. And so therefore, the temptation will still be there. Well, I got saved. I got saved in 1951. But he didn't save me from temptation because I'm still tempted. I mean, we will be tempted until you breathe that last breath. You'll be tempted in various ways. And so he didn't, he didn't stop that. So he didn't take my temptation away, but he made a way of escape. And I know better than to do some things. I knew better then, but I went ahead and did it. Here's what it says in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. He says, There hath no temptation taken you, but such as a common man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer or allow you to be tempted above that you're able. But will with the temptation also make a way of escape that you may be able to, to bear it. He'll make a way of escape. And so today, if I think you've got a, I remember when I was pastor here in the early 80s that we had a back door. And so if somebody was to come in the front door and offer me uh, something, I, I could say no. And say, if you come out this door, uh, you're going to be a sinner. I said, well, I, I can take it. He made me escape. I can go out the back door. And kind of like the uh, guy when they uh, was going to handle rattlesnakes. He said, well, I know where the back door was. He said, they, they, they don't have a back door. He said, well, I reckon where they want one. He was going to get out of there. And so we need to know the way of escape. And there is a way of escape. I've got a message on this uh, titled the, the Lonely Bypass. Because God has made a bypass around temptation, around sin, and I can take that bypass, but you know very folks do, very few folks do. Most folks just push right onto it. Remind me of a little kid. People today, especially a lot of people in church today, remind me of a little kid. You get a little boy, and you get him a brand new pair of shoes, and you get him all fixed up and ready to go and everything. And if there's one mud puddle in the yard, guess where that little rascal's going? He's going he's gonna to go through that mud puddle. And so today, people that are supposed to be saved, they're supposed to know that they can walk around that mud puddle. Boy, they just push right on through it and see how much mud they can spatter on everybody else. So I'm free from the penalty of sin because Jesus died in my place, shed his blood. I'm free from the power of sin because I've got, now that I'm saved, I've got the Holy Spirit of God living within, and he's going to nudge me and tell me how to go, and he's going to nudge me and tell me when I've done uh, something wrong. And that's the reason I go to 1 John uh, chapter 1, verse number 8 and 9. If you confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive your sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So if I get out here in a mud puddle, and if I step in a mud puddle uh, oh, by accident, then I can pray, God forgive me. Or if I, if I did it on purpose, 
I need, when the Holy Spirit convicts me, I need to say, Lord, forgive me. I confess that as sin. Lord, forgive me. And therefore, I can be free from the power of sin because all I've got to do now is follow the leadership of the Holy Spirit because He's going to lead me in the paths that I should go. So I'm free from the penalty of sin. That's called justification. I'm free from the power of sin, and that's called sanctification. I know what's right, and therefore, when I got saved, whether or not you know it or whether or not you've ever been told, a saved person is a saint. Many times, Paul, writing their letters, the little epistles that he wrote, the letters that he wrote, he would write to the saints that are in certain, certain place, to the saints that are scattered, to the saints that are scattered. So, friend, if you're saved this morning, you're a saint. So why don't you go ahead and act like it? I'm a saint, so just go ahead and call me St. Don if you want to. Or if you don't want to, you can just call me Don. Or if you don't know my name, like Pam didn't introduce me because she didn't know my name. Anyway. <laughs> anyway. I'm free from the penalty of sin because Jesus died in my place. I'm free from the power of sin because I know what God says about it and I know that the Holy Spirit will lead me and help me and I know that I can be free from the, I don't have to do that anymore. And if I do that, I'm standing in front of the mirror and say, you rascal, you, you did that. And so today, that is a call of sanctification and friend, you need to get in God's word and learn how a saint ought to talk, how a saint ought to walk, what a saint ought to do because you're a saint. Whether or not you know it, you may not look like a saint, you may not walk like a saint. You may not talk like a saint. You may not even smell like a saint. I don't know how a saint smells. You may not even say it. Anyway, this morning, you can be free from the penalty, the power, and the last thing. In Revelation chapter 21, one of these days soon, I'm going to be free from the presence of sin. The penalty, Jesus I was talking to Brother Jackie last night. He called. He, he waited till late to call me. And he the first thing he said, did I wake you up? Well, I think he was waiting late to hoping he would wake me up. But uh, we were talking about some, some, some important issues last night. And we were talking about how Brother Jackie said, I'm preaching uh, at the homecoming service. I'm going to tell them that the, the Lord's coming back soon. I believe he is, folks. Because I believe the world's got some stinking rotten. I'm telling you one thing, it's just, uh, you almost have to take an uh, aspirin before you go out, before you open the door of the morning. But one of these days, I'm going to be free from the presence of sin. Romans, Romans, uh, Revelation chapter 21. Here's what we're going to be looking forward to, we that are saved and don't have to worry about sin anymore. He said in Revelation chapter 21, verse 1 said, I saw a new heaven and a new earth. From the first heaven, the first earth were passed away. There was no more sea. And John saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride, adorned for her husband. What a beautiful sight that's going to be. And I heard a great voice out of heaven say, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them, and be their God, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. There shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. One of these days, when the Lord says that's enough, and he tells Jesus he can come back, this old world, that these people that are, are stealing and lying and all this stuff that's going on around about us, I get so aggravated when I look at the, the television, I see what the Supreme Court has done, I see what this person doing, I, and if they, if they didn't shoot one another down in Memphis, I don't think they'd have anything talked about on the news. I get so tired of people, uh, the world we're living in, with all the thievery, this, all the crooks that's going on, uh, everything going on. But one of these days, I'm not going to have to worry about the liars because they're not going to be there. I am going to be free from the presence of sin. I'm not going to have to worry about the thief anymore. I get so aggravated, I have to go and I, I have to... I lock everything I got with a really big heavy chain anymore because they got these uh, uh, power tools that they can come. I mean, you got to have a, you got to have everything. I guess so tired of locking everything and locking it wasn't so bad. But now at my age, I have to go back and recheck it. 
I get so aggravated with, with having to recheck everything. A pastor one time was trying to get his, uh, uh, one of his ladies to, to think about the hereafter. And he said, uh, uh, dear lady, he said, uh, uh, do you ever think about the hereafter? She said, well, yeah. I think about the hereafter all the time. She said, well, I'll walk out of the kitchen into the bedroom. And I'll turn around and say, what did I come in here after? <laughs> but we need to think about it. I get so tired of what's going on. I, I, but one of these days, I'm going to be free from the presence of sin. I'm not going to have to live with that unruly neighbor anymore. I'm not going to have to live with that uh, crook anymore. I'm not going to, man, because that's all going to be in the past. All this thing is going to be somewhere else, and I'm going to be in heaven. And what a day that's going to be. And friend, today, if, if, if there was no more crying and no more pain, every once in a while, and well, you do too, have people walk up to you and they say, how you doing? <laughs> and my answer is, I feel pretty good in spots. <laughs> Boy, there's other, them other spots hurt. And them spots that feel good is getting smaller every day. I mean, I, I hurt all over. And, but one of these days, he said, there's going to be more pain. Well, if it wasn't no more crying, no more pain, and no more sorrow, no more death, no more dying, all that stuff, that sounds like heaven right here. And you know what? This would be a really nice place to live if people would act right, if people would do right. But I'm finding today that, that uh, salvation is not what it used to be. Salvation, when the person got saved, he did try to learn about God. He did try to do right. He did try to you know, quit, quit lying and, and quit stealing. He did, but not anymore. A person gets saved, and two weeks later, you can't tell the difference. It ought to be a difference. Salvation experience ought to be a difference. And especially if you look on the cross, the price that he paid that I might be free from the penalty of sin. If you look at the cross, the agony that he endured, it would make us do different and think different. So I became free from the penalty of sin. That's called justification. I became free from the power of sin. That's called sanctification. And then I'm going to become one day, I'm going to be free from the presence of sin. And that's called glorification. What a day that's going to be. And so today, I hope that you know what I'm talking about. When I say Jesus said, Jesus said, If the Son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. Free without question. Today I hope that finds you there in that situation. And I hope you don't take your freedom for granted because it cost God, His only begotten Son, it cost God everything so that you might be go free. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you today for these thoughts. Thank you, Lord, today that you did remove the old sin penalty from our life. We thank you, Lord, today as we learn to walk as the Spirit would have us walk. We pray, Lord, that we might be free from the power, that it might not have dominion over us anymore. Lord, today we pray during this invitation time, if there's anyone here that needs to know your Savior, Lord, that they'll be saved before it's too late. God, for those that are saved, help us, Lord, to be about the Father's business. Help us, Lord, to get serious in this world we live in. Get serious, Lord, and go forth with a message of hope to the folks that are sitting out there in a hopeless situation. Lead God and direct during this invitation time. Give us the strength and the wisdom and courage to make decisions that will bring glory and honor to the precious name of Jesus. And we'll be careful to give you the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. And amen. Thank you.